Module 3, Placing Pipe and Components, covers the following topics. Pipe, Components, Info Blocks, Auto Elbow, and the Auto Route feature. The first topic in Module 3 is Pipe. Let's place some pipe components. First, we'll set our isoplane, our spec, our size, and our line number, and then we can select the Pipe tab, and then the Pipe tool. We'll zoom up on our drawing and just place some pipe components for this sample. The pipe will follow the isometric axis. We can go in either direction. To change the axis, we can select our isoplane tab, or the function key F5 is also a way of changing it. We can change simply by hitting the F5 key. Now I can draw vertical lines. Easy to do. Let's look at some of the other pipe tools that we have. We have a break tool where if we have two pieces of pipe, we could actually break the pipe. For instance, there and there. And it will break the pipe component. We also have the pipe end symbol. Place a pipe end symbol. We even have a ground or wall penetration symbol. Reverse if we need to. And it gives us the appearance of going through a wall. Our next topic is components. We'll place some piping components. We'll start with flanges. Before we place our flanges, though, we look at our active settings for our isoplane, our spec, main size, line number. Once those are set, we can then place our component. Select the flange tool. We have a weld point insertion or a face of flange insertion, depending on what component you're attaching to. We'll just place these components for samples. Pick OK, pick a location, and then a direction. And there's our flange symbol. If we want to include gaskets and bolts, very easy to do. Do the other face of flange, pick a start point and a direction, and it adds our flange plus a gasket and bolt. We can do a flange set, pick a direction, and it puts in a set of flanges. Our next component that we can place are the gaskets and bolts. So we can place a gasket individually, a bolt individually, or a gasket and bolt. So for instance, on this flange where I have no gasket or bolt, I could place individually or place them both at the same time. Pick my start point and a direction, and it adds the gasket and the bolt. We can also put in gasket ticks if we need as a finishing touch. Our next component, let's take a look at valves. Valves allow us to place all the common types of valves as well as some autocomplete routines that we'll take a look at. For a sample, we'll place a gate valve, pick a start point and a direction. It will ask, as one of our default toggles, is add a stem, and we'll say yes. Pick the direction and decide for the valve stem, set to our isoplane. All the different types of valves are shown. We can also take a look at the autocomplete, so we can look at each of these. So this one will place a flange, a gasket, and a valve, so I'll toggle that on. And I'll place the same gate valve. We'll pick a start point, the direction of the valve. We won't add the stem this time. And it puts in a flange, a gasket, and the valve, leaving this end open for some other components. The second type of placement is a gasket, a valve, a gasket, and a flange. And this would be if I wanted to place up against the nozzle or some other flanged item. Again, I can pick my start point, my direction, we won't add the stem, and this time it puts in the gasket, the bolts, the valve itself, the gasket, bolt, and then the flange. So it reverses it. And then our final one is a complete set, where we get a flange, gasket, valve, gasket, flange. Toggle that one on. Using the same valve, pick a start point, the direction, we won't add the stem, and it puts in a complete valve set, where we have the flange, gasket, valve, gasket, flange. So depending on the placement requirements, we can adjust accordingly. A sample where we would use a gasket valve and flange may be on a gate valve combined with a check valve. So I would toggle on and then select my check valve. Pick my start point and then the direction. With a check valve, ask for a direction, we'll just say OK. And it adds in the gasket, the check valve, the gasket, and a flange. So now we're bolting two valves together. Our next topic, InfoBlocks, allows us to get information about a component that has been placed. We don't always know the information, but we would like to find out. Some ways of doing it are as simple as 
putting your cursor over the component, and it will give you a brief description saying it's a 4x4 straight T, butt welded. Go over the next component, a 4x3 reducing T. Even though the two components look alike, they do have different information. So any component, it will give you a brief description. Another way of getting this information is to select the Settings tab and then the Component Info tool. Select your item and it brings up the material data list for that particular item. If we select a valve, for instance, it will give us the information about the valve. If we select the flange, it gives us data about the flange. Another method is to select the Change tab and then the Dynamic Attribute Edit. Using this tool allows us to see the component name in our library system. Very useful if you need to make changes to some of the data. The size string, the pipe rating, the line number. We can make changes here, but it is advisable not to make changes. You should use your spec generator. Our next topic, auto elbow. Let's look at automating our pipe routing. Before we can use the auto elbow tool, we must go in and route a pipeline. So there is a pipe routing line tool that allows us to go in, and I'll just do a sample, to route our pipe. What this is just represents the center line of the pipe. We can then go to our pipe tab and then select auto elbow. This gives us two options, add elbows only or add elbows and pipes. Let's take a look at adding elbows only. Click OK. The routine allows us to place only 90 degree long radius elbows. Select our piping and it places elbows at each of the corners allowing us then to place components in between our elbows. Let's look at doing another routing line, and this time we'll make it a little more complex. So we can actually hit F5 to change the direction. This time we'll look at the auto elbow with pipe and elbows, which is the default. Select our routing line. Not only does it put the elbows in, it also puts in the pipe component. Very easy with simple piping runs. The last topic in Module 3 is the auto route feature. This automates placing pipe and components. We'll look at two samples, one with auto route disabled and the second with the auto route enabled. We'll do a simple piping run coming off of our vessel. Let's zoom up on the vessel and place some components. Check your active settings, then we can select our components. We'll start off by placing a flange with gasket and bolts to face a flange off of our nozzle. And we can pick the start point of the flange and then the direction. And it places our components. We will now place an elbow turning down. So first we will set our isoplane. Then we'll select the fittings tab and our 90 degree elbow. It asks for the weld point of the elbow. We'll use our shift and right click to pick up the center of our elbow. The direction of the elbow, the first direction, will come over this direction. Second direction, or the side of the elbow, will pick down. We'll then add a piece of pipe. Again, we will select the center point of our elbow and then click down. Let's place another elbow changing direction. So we can pick up the end point of our pipe, the direction of the elbow, and the side of the elbow. Let's place a valve for this sample. We'll turn on the valve complete with flanges, and then we'll select our gate valve. Again, it asks now for the weld point of our flange, so I will select the center and then the direction. I didn't change my isoplane setting, but it does allow me to change it, so I will pick the orientation I'd like to have, and it will place the valve, and we'll add a valve stem. So we'll come up and then over. There's a simple piping run. I'll stop there and then we'll reverse this and try it with the auto route enabled. You'll notice I had to use the starting points, we had to use object snaps, endpoints and midpoints and centers to run the pipe. Auto route automates this feature. So to begin the auto route feature, we first go to the auto route tab and we'll enable the auto route using the next fitting inserted. We'll reset our isoplane. We'll go back now to our flanges, flanges, gaskets, and bolts. 
pick our starting point because we're the next fitting inserted, and we'll pick our direction. Now we can pick our components. We can set our isoplane, we can go to our fittings, we can pick our elbow, and now it's just asking for the side of the elbow so it knows the starting and the direction it's going, and we just pick the side of the elbow. Then we can add a piece of pipe, add an elbow, and just the side of the elbow. Automatically selects the isoplane and changes it for us. I can then set my valves, set my flange, pick the valve, add my stem, and it automates that process. Way faster. I didn't have to use my object snaps. We'll continue and finish off this piping run for this sample. So another piece of pipe. Go back to our fittings, place an elbow. Maybe another piece of pipe. Let's put in a reducer. 4x3 reducer. Changes it. And notice it changes my main size automatically to 3 inch. So my next component placed will be a 3 inch size. And I'll just put in a straight T. And it's only asking for the branch direction. So I pick my branch. We'll see a branch run and the main run. Select a direction you'd like to continue in. By default, it is the red arrow. And this will be our spool. This concludes the topics covered in Module 3. Please review Module 3 or select the next module.